to another Finding God in Video Games Ministry Spotlight. And today I have an amazing guest, Ricky Pope from the Christian Nerds Unite podcast. Normally he's on this side of things. And today he has graced us with his presence to let us do a deep dive into his ministry and how he has become a, a voice for Christian podcasting specifically for those of us who associate with nerddom and various fandoms. So Ricky, welcome to our, our little show here. Steven, it is so great to be on the show. Um, I, I have I have been following Finding God in video games from a distance for quite some time. Um, I don't know if you guys showed up on the, the playing field before me or after me, but uh, I feel like it happened... A very similar time frame. And then we went on very divergent paths. You became highly <laughs> successful. And uh, a lot of our followers are still following from a very great distance, from a very, very long distance. So much we can't see them right now. It's a whole in that thing. It's I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain, my friend. We're we're hopeful that that what they're what's actually happening right now is that they're just lurking and they've chose not to follow us or even like us for that matter. They're they're following <laughs> us the most difficult way possible, searching us every time. So it's it's incredible to get to have you here. And I I just want to start with kind of learning a little bit about your favorite part of this this incredible kind of nerd renaissance that we've all been enjoying. All mm -hmm. of our favorite art forms and fandoms have become more acceptable to pursue than ever before, whether it's gaming, whether it's anime, whether it's comic books and superheroes and mm -hmm. such. Mainstream audiences are finally accepting what we've thought is awesome for years. What's your favorite part about what we are getting to enjoy as as nerds that now don't have to to hide our t-shirts anymore? We can go out in public with them. <laughs> I, you know, that is that's a fascinating idea. And I I am super excited about that. Yeah, uh, it, it was, I mean, I grew up in the 70s, went to high school in the early 80s. Um, and uh, you know, it was you were the odd man out if you, you know, if you're 16 or 17 and you still like cartoons on saturday mornings um or uh you know even if the cartoon seemed to be a whole lot more highbrow than the major cartoons it still didn't appear that way to the vast majority of people it was still a cartoon so um you know that whole idea that this is not just acceptable now this is kind of part and parcel of what um what american especially american culture is um and i think part of that comes from uh, people like me uh who were grew up you know as those super nerdy kids when it was just kind of getting started you know I, I remember seeing star wars in the theaters the first time around uh i'm i'm old enough to have seen have done that um, and, uh, you know, we eventually got old enough that we were then starting to create content. And uh, I think that's where it really comes into play. Uh, you know, the nerds kind of took over things and, um, and then the nerds had kids and taught their kids to be nerds. Um, you know, we, we have created this culture ourselves, <laughs> It's amazing. Like I would have never imagined going to just a basic department store in a mall and here's Sega and Nintendo t-shirts there. And I'm like, you had to hunt these kind of things down. People had to make them oh, yeah. for you. And now I can go to my local Target or Walmart, CVS or Walgreens. I can find stuff that has my favorite fandoms on it. That's what we've experienced in the last 15 years is just it, it, sh it honestly shouldn't have happened, but it's incredible that it has. And I, I know that yeah. I'm greatly enjoying seeing, although not all of them um, stack up as well as others. So what would, what would of you course. say is your most disappointing part of this? Because we, we have seen gaming adaptations of movies that aren't terrible. That's, that's in, that was never <laughs> a thing for us for a while. Like they didn't just make one Sonic movie good. They made two, maybe a third one's coming. We, we don't know if that one's going to be good, but what we're getting to enjoy now it's it's almost too good to be true and sometimes it is some of these things are not they so what what would you say is the most disappointing thing you've seen as some of our stuff does become mainstream and unfortunately wow. becomes ripped apart by 
Hollywood executives or others that don't understand it. Um, that's a that's interesting. The I think one of the things I am a little disappointed is that some things got so big so fast that you know you talk about the executives the executives of anything whether it's toy companies this happened in comic books in the 90s um you know toy manufacturers throughout the period the film industry right now specifically everybody piled on they they saw this opportunity to make lots of money rather than to create great things and then they created so much of it that and they ran out of they ran ahead of themselves they ran out of the best things and had to start using some of the not so great things which honestly is great for me as a nerd who was is into all of the all of these smaller properties or, 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 you know, smaller bits of big properties. And I'm super interested, but the, but they don't, they're not a good fit for the masses. So now we get this implosion. <laughs> um, you know, we, we can't get a Marvel movie now that, you know, is, is breaking a hundred million dollars on opening weekend like we could four or five years ago. And some people will point to, well, it's because it's all cruddy and they've put all this extra stuff in, which I, I don't disagree with, but I think the bigger issue is that the stuff that's being made now is made is um, it doesn't connect as well with the, the bigger world. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, and I am sure where to, th I mean, like Guardians of the Galaxy seemed to connect with everybody. Exactly. So the Guardians of the Galaxy was one of the few recent ones that was still a big hit. Um, but you try to create this niche character that, you know, people don't understand or don't aren't familiar with as a whole. And it tanks and everybody blames it on one thing or the other thing and i think what it really was was just the vast majority of people didn't understand it or know about it so they didn't connect with it so they didn't go see it um and i you know that's not a bad thing necessarily but what happens is that uh you know the big studios pour all the extra money in to make it uh, spectacular, but then they can't get the money out, which means we're not going to get another one. Absolutely. To finish those stories. And that's the challenge is yeah. many of these were meant to be like Gardens of the Galaxy played out over several different of their own movies, as well as interplayed in others. Yeah. You got the richness of it. And many of these, yeah. we introduce a character and then we quickly drop them because it didn't hit a certain threshold of desired success. It's funny because what you're talking about for me in a lot of ways, just it almost runs parallel to Christianity in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where the, the overarching concept is not necessarily abhorrent to a lot of people, right? Like a lot of the, the idea of, of an interconnected Marvel cinematic universe or DC universe, if they ever actually figured mm -hmm. that out, like the concept <laughs> of it is great. When you start getting into the, the the fine details and the continuity of it, even within nerdom, we start to separate from each other very quickly. Yeah. Well, that character, you know, that's not how they would have been played. That's not how it is the comics. Never mind that none of these have actually been fully accurate to their comic book counterparts. But we For start sure. finding those details and we start dividing. Yeah. Even within nerddom, we start splitting and we're like, we're... Yeah this side or that side when we should all just be happy that any wonder woman movie ever happened much less yes, that we, exactly. we got to see the character several times there was there was a world just a couple of decades ago that was an impossibility yes. and if you think about christianity in a very similar light like it the the big picture of it for most people is moderately attractive and then we start separating we start getting these mm -hmm. dividing lines where we we pick one scripture and we decide to say because of this one we must go two separate ways and we we divide out and, and destroy the strength 
of the entire concept for it. And that's what yeah. I love about what you're doing with the the, the name Christian Nerds Unite. The, yes. That concept of it, I, I, I love, and I'm sure you did it intentionally, but it works on both levels because both mm -hmm. For those of us who are nerds, the reality is the only thing we love more than than sharing about our favorite properties is arguing about them sometimes. Yes, <laughs> well, absolutely. This one's better than absolutely. this one. Well, this is a great character, but a terrible movie or vice versa. Yeah. And then the same thing happens in our pockets of Christianity. We should all be one happy family. And yet we are probably more divided across denominations than, than mm -hmm. in the history of Christianity and continue to splinter out more and more and more. We're like, it's not just non-denominational. Non-denominational has its own factions now. Yeah. It's, it's well, and, and this, this happened in comic books in the nineties. Um, so you, you have this, regardless of how involved in the, the major cultural scheme things are, um, eventually, if you splinter down like you were referring to, uh, you you start getting little pockets that don't have as much. There's not as many resources anymore. So in comic books in the in the 90s, you know, like Image Comics launched and all these. Oh, my goodness. I actually worked in a comic book shop back in the 90s. So I remember this. There was like this huge explosion of all these major independent comic companies that were pumping out huge numbers of comics. And that's great for nerds until you go, you know what? I have only a certain amount of money I can spend every month. So I'm going to stick with the big, you know, the big three. Um, but everybody thought that this was gonna, this gravy train was gonna explode and it imploded and, uh, you know, tons and tons of these companies went under, um, on my show, I actually had uh, a guy who worked for, um, he was, uh, was he the editor? I can't remember his exact position, but, uh, he worked for Malibu comics. If you're familiar with Malibu. <clears throat> and uh and he basically it was his job to basically shut the company down when it was bought out by one of the big three and uh you know they absorbed all the content and basically said we're just not going to publish these anymore because they're not profitable when if we if they had stayed small and niche they probably could have survived long term um, and I, I, you know, I think that's what's happening with, uh, you know, the, the big movie companies right now, they're, they're trying to pump out too much content so that we have to, we we're spread so thin. I've got to make a decision. Am I going to go see this one or this one? And okay, well, one of them's not going to win. And when that one doesn't win, it tanks so badly that the companies say they're not going to do it anymore. Um, that happens in churches. You know, we get, I I'm, I'm in Oklahoma. Uh, I'm not sure actually where you are, but I'm Florida. in Oklahoma, Florida. Okay. In, in Oklahoma, there is literally another church on every corner, you know, um, the, I, I cannot number name the number of churches in the little town that I live in. And, uh, you know, at some point you get these, you have tons and tons of tiny little churches that um, aren't able to sustain themselves because they're too spread out. And then you have, you know, one or two really large churches that, that thrive and do great things. And then you get all these little churches that are mad about the big, large church being effective um, because, and they can't get people to show up, but you know, maybe we need to combine some of those and reintegrate some of that and make some healthy, you know, choices along the way. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. The whole idea is interesting. And we, you, you mentioned before the podcast, you wanted to hear a little bit about, you know, how, what I did came to be, um, and one of the things that when I was thinking about podcast uh, that I had heard everybody say is you got to niche down, got to niche down, got to niche down. 
And uh, I would tell people about my podcast and I would say, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm doing okay, but I'm not where I want to be. And they were all almost to a person. They were like, yeah, your, your niche just isn't, isn't tight enough yet. I'm like, well, I'm Christians that are nerdy. Um, I mean, that's two pretty, <laughs> I, that's two that's, things that are that's fairly pretty niche. narrowed down. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, you know, like you guys are niched down even further because you focus mostly on video games. It hasn't worked out um, great for us. <laughs> I, I, I stick a little broader um, because, it, and part of the deal was, well, I want this to be something I enjoy doing. So I have a pretty broad nerd net that I cast. Um, I don't go into anything super deeply you know i'm mostly a marvel guy i'm mostly a star wars guy but i enjoy some star trek and i enjoy some dc and uh you know some of the other you know smaller brands along the way um you know i one of my absolute favorite shows is a cartoon from the 80s called robotech um and that that gets that gets hated on on a regular basis um but uh you know, th so there's there's all these things that pull me like I'm I enjoy video games, but video games aren't my big focus. Uh, I enjoy tabletop role playing games, <clears throat> but I don't get to do it as often as I would like. Um, but I still enjoy doing it casually. And uh, so that's that's one of those things where when I did this, I was thinking, man, I don't want to niche myself down into. I only can talk about Star Wars or I can only talk about Marvel. I'm like, I, I want to talk about all these things and I want to have conversations about all these things. Um, and uh, so that's kind of where the idea of Christian Nerds Unite came out of, um, or at least having that broad net idea. And, uh, you know, talking about how, how I came to the, to the name officially. So uh, you said, uh, I asked you about how much into the weeds you want to get. So when I launched, I, I have been working in social media um, semi-professionally, I'll say, uh, because I, I've been helping churches and ministries with social media for several years. Um, and I'm an early adopter on social media stuff anyway. Uh, you know, I... As soon as my phone had the ability to start live streaming back in the, the first live streams on Facebook, our church was live streaming our, our service God. on my phone. I would set my <laughs> phone up like, I was like, Hey, pastor Steven, the Facebook's got this new thing. Uh, I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, so along the way I've, I've always kind of been an early adopter in that kind of sense. And uh, so the, uh, so I, I learned a lot of different techniques and things of how, how you can launch some things. And uh, one of the things that I figured out early on is um, number one, don't, uh, don't get too tied into your name because if your name doesn't work and if people can't find you, then or it doesn't hit then what are you going to do so i actually launched three social media channels all at the same time all with the idea of christian nerddom they had various names some were a little more churchy some were a little more nerdy and uh, so i launched three of them and i just started posting stuff every day on all three and i just went all right, let's see which one hits. And Christian Nerds Unite started just, you know, it it double, triple, four times the the interest of either of the other two. I was like, all right, well, that's the name. That's what we're going with. Um, but I, I would have loved, I would have liked any of the names. Um, you know, one was more technology based. Uh I started the uh um uh the Christian tech guy uh, as one of my things because i'm i'm a church technologist i've uh i was a worship pastor for 15 years i served as a technical director at a small church for um for 10 years 
So, you know, I, I, I lived that life. I used to sell audio, video, and lighting equipment to churches nationwide. Uh, I worked for a company that did that. And so I, I lived that world. I'm like, I could, I could have fun in that kind of podcast. Uh, the other one, uh, I was the, the nerd pastor, which is a little more generic. It sounds a little more Christian than nerdy. Um, but Christian Nerd Unite is the one that exploded. And I'm like, all right, well, going to just go ahead, go ahead and park these other two names. We'll keep them around just in case. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if anything comes up later, but, uh, but so that's how, you know, Christian Nerd Unite became what it is. And, uh, you know, and, and it all really started because I was in a Christian nerd group and uh, I won't name the name of it, but um, I was, I was one of the, uh, the admins I had been, somebody else was running it, had started it, was running the Facebook group. Uh, they added me as an admin and I was helping do stuff. I helped grow that group, double, triple the size. Um, and the lead admin kind of went off the rails and kicked me out of the group and took the group a way up that I would not, um, I would not be comfortable with. And, uh, I was like, Oh, okay. So I guess, uh, I guess that's what happens when somebody else is in control. So <laughs> I guess if if I want to do it the way I want to do it, I guess I better start my own thing. And uh, that's kind of where all that came from. And and being a video and audio guy for years, uh, the podcast was always in the back of my mind. And I thought, okay, if if one of these three blows up, you know, if one of these three connects, then I'll launch a podcast with that name. And probably within six months of starting the Facebook page and the Facebook group, I launched the podcast. So when that happened, that was obviously a big setback at first, I'm sure. You were probably oh, yeah. very hurt, very offended, very disappointed. But that really <laughs> yes. was kind of your your Paul and Barnabas parting kind of moment, right? Like, yeah, that that's, that's such a hard part of scripture to wrap your brain around that Paul and Barnabas, yep. did all these great works. And then suddenly it was just over. This was their version of the, the Marvel civil war. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. just, they just went their own separate ways. And then you went and you found success with, with Silas and you, and you found your peace. Now yep. I don't, I will tell you, I don't really know what all happened with Barnabas afterwards. I'm sure him and John Mark did did some good things. And then Mark wrote a great book about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Later on. I'm sure. But that's it's such a powerful story to think of. You know, a lot of times we we take these setbacks and we think, oh, well, that means I'm not meant to do this. When really it was just it was your time to go and find yeah. your way. So if, I, if someone... I absolutely agree. Yeah. Sometimes a setback is not a, a um a no a setback is this is just the wrong place mm. that's that's I, that's, a, that's, that's why i look at right it there and i know a lot of times you know the people that you know maybe listen to this they may be struggling with is this my calling from god what i'm feeling in my heart is this yeah the destiny as for me and and sometimes that 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 big that's not just a roadblock for you that wasn't a detour that was a hard stop <laughs> yeah that. yeah but that wasn't an indication that it wasn't meant to be. It was simply an indication that you're going to go on a parallel and then diagonal path from here into the success yeah. you had. So um, as we wrap up here, this has been so much fun and we're already almost at our time. So <laughs> I would, if, if you had the ability to go back and give yourself some advice when you first started your, your podcasting mission here, if you could go back in time and just tell the Ricky Pope of that time period. Hey, I've got, I've got a few nuggets for you that save you a little bit of pain and a little bit of problems. What would you go back and tell yourself that maybe some people could take for themselves as they start their journeys? Um, so I will, uh, let me rewind just a little bit. So I also had a, a Facebook page called Christian nerds, which I still technically have. Um, and once again, it was something somebody else had started. They handed it off to me and they left. Um, and for whatever reason, Facebook 
there was some Facebook issue and it basically stopped getting reach, period. Now, mind you, I ran other Christian pages that were going gangbusters that were uh, straightforward Christian pages. So I knew this wasn't a Christ Facebook hates Christians thing. Um, but something about my page was not working. Um, and I got super frustrated. And I wasted tons and tons of time trying to get that Facebook page to work again. I mean, months trying to get that Facebook page to work again. Um, I have a friend, uh, my friend Stephen, that I would... I would complain to all the time. He's like, oh my gosh, please stop complaining. Um, so my first thing is, if it's not working, it's 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 okay to let that go. That's, that's my first nugget of advice to my previous self. If I had started, if I had just gone, ah, this one's not working anymore, we'll just start a new one. I probably would be a year ahead of where I am right now. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, so that's, that's kind of my first little nugget. It's like, if it's not working, it's okay to put it down and, 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 and pivot it. That's okay. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, another thing that I, let's see, what else would I tell myself? Um, <clears throat> I, I also would tell myself it's okay if it doesn't explode right off the bat. Slow and steady is perfectly fine. And honestly, slow and steady is probably better in most cases. Christian Urge Unite grew really fast. Um, almost too fast. Mm -hmm. Almost to the point that I was like, oh, wow, what am I going to do with all these people? Um, as, as far as the Facebook page and Facebook group goes. Um, you know, it became... At one point, it was hard for me to just keep up with with what was happening in the group because with the group, you know, everybody can mm. can put in, um, and Facebook has put in some really really great new features that help admins a lot. Um, but uh, you know, back then it was hey, you just there's this free for all happening. And things would just go off the rails sometimes. Um, and uh, people would people would start conversations. They would start arguments. People would leave the group because they were so mad about whatever was going on. And then I would eventually find out two days later that, any, that the post was happening because there were so many people and it was happening mm -hmm. so fast. <clears throat> and uh, so... There, there are some things, you know, if you've got somebody who knows how to run a Facebook group, definitely get them involved early and uh, help them guide you on how to set things up and how to control this mass of humanity. Um, you know, the, I, I literally started, I, I, Christian Urge Unite, we definitely have, uh, you know, Christian, strong Christian faith, um, but one of the things I didn't want to get into was theological arguments in the group. And so I literally started Theology for Christian Nerds Facebook group to just to tell people, okay, hey, this Here's is your a, playground over this, here. You don't have to play as question. nice. <laughs> yes, this is a great question. Let's move it over to the other group. Um, that group also grew really, really fast. And eventually I stepped away from that group because I just could not emotionally handle all the arguments that were going on. Other people run that group now. They're great. Um, there's like 20,000 people in that group. Uh, but, uh, you know, but, oh my goodness, the arguments that happen there, I just don't have the bandwidth for. <laughs> um, so when, if it doesn't explode, it's okay. It's okay to grow slowly and probably you're going to have a better stronger more voracious following if you grow mm -hmm. slowly um you know i i have the christian urge night podcast facebook page facebook group um it's in the name 
It's literally in the name. <laughs> and I still have people to this day who are in the group and go, when I post about the podcast every once in a while, and they go, there's a podcast? <laughs> like, you joined the, it's in the name. <laughs> um, So I definitely grew faster than, uh, then probably I I it it probably would be a stronger, more niche group, a tighter group if it had grown slower. Mm. Um I'm happy for the explosive growth that growth it had, but looking back, it it would have been okay if it had grown small slower. So I think those are kind of the two things that uh that I I think I would advise myself. Um I also think I would have advised myself to start the theology group earlier. <laughs> so that way you already had a parking lot for all of those things to transition into. Yeah. Well, there's 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 something that Christians and nerds unite about, and that's that we will always find something to disagree with each other on yes, and talk about. It's nice when we absolutely. play nice, as long as we can stay united. Not so nice when we have to say, you guys got to take this outside. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, Ricky, thank you so much for the, the time you gave us today and and just sharing some of your insight and just how Christian Nerds Unite podcast is, has changed and grown because of both the Lord's leading as well as your willingness to be able to embrace these changes as they came through. So, Ricky, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Christian Nerds Unite podcast, give them a follow. But play nice in, in the comments <laughs> and what you post. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time in our next Finding God in Video Game Spotlight.